Greetings fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! This week I continue my series talking about Trinity Continuum Aberrant, aka Aberrant 2nd Edition, by talking about character creation and a little bit about advancement. So, this is where we get into the actual meat of what sort of sets up how you make your superheroes, oh sorry, your Novas. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy as we uh, go quantum. So, Aberrant 2nd Edition uses the story path system. So, that means it uses the same sort of system for character creation as, well, Trinity Core, of course, and Scion 2nd Edition. Now, Aberrant, of course, you know, literally uses the same steps. Step one, pick your concept. Step two, take your origin, role, and society paths. Note that in Trinity, in Aberrant, you've got the the society paths that are in the Aberrant setting. So, your main choices are the Aeon Society, Project Utopia, Terrigen, The Directive, The Elites, and Project Daedalus. There are a few others that are kind of like from the Trinity Core, but for the most part, those six are your main choices. And those are kind of, you kind of want to get together as a group and talk about which one you're going to go with, because doing, like, a Directive Nova with a Terrigen Nova gets kind of messy because, well, you know, Terrigen are terrorists. So... Um, of course, each of these gives, has four skills that you get to pick three dots to assign between. And there's this kind of weird wording. They say you can't put dots into skills from other paths. I personally go with you can't put dots into skills that aren't in that current path that you are using. Like, you know, if you have a two paths that give you something relating to shooting guns, you can still put something into shooting guns in your sec, you know, if you take the second path, you're not because I didn't put dots in shooting guns. I can't put dots in shooting guns in future paths because, frankly, when you look at the skill skills of the different paths, there are a number that overlap, and if you take a origin path, you know where you grew up, whether you were. Uh, kid of privilege, uh, military brat, that sort of thing. If you take one of those origin paths that has a lot of skills that overlap with your role path, like, say, you were a rich kid and you're also going to be the group's face. Well, the pa the role path and the origin path, like, most of their skills overlap. So you would end up not being able to take any skills? That kind of seems wrong. So, personally, when I run it, I'm like, you only get to assign those skill dots 
to the skills in that path, not not from other paths you have taken. And I think that's what they meant. You know, then of course you get your free skills, your six dots of free skills after that, and of course any skill that's at three gets a skill trick. And any skill that I believe it's four gets a specialty. You know, and those are kind of little quirks and things. Just make make the most use out of those skills. And then of course you pick your attributes. Now it goes with the normal priority system of two, four, six. But then it adds that nice, the training course system adds a neat little thing of you then pick your preferred method. Finesse, power, resilience. And then every every attribute in that favored approach gets one extra dot. So in a way, it's still 753, it's just one of those is picked by, you know, what you're good at. Then you go to step 5 where you apply the Nova template. And the Nova template, you essentially get 150 points. They're not quite experience points because they're flat out everything you buy it at this rank. You know, you buy it per dot, not per rating of the dots. And what the first things you do when you apply the Nova template are you gain a quantum trait of one. You become the Nova tier, so you have a target number of seven for everything you do. You gain one dot in one attribute in your favorite approach. No, that's not one dot in each. That's one dot in one attribute. Then you get a choice. Are you famous or do you have a secret identity? Uh, the, I, are, do you get a point of fame? Or do you get the a point in the alternate identity edge? Relative obscurity is not a thing when you can, well, be a superhero. And yes, you can improve your fame and your alternate identity normally. In fact, you might already have some of those by this point, and this is adding to them. And then, of course, you get the 150 experience points, and from those, you get to build everything about your character. You can spend them for attributes, edges, enhanced edges. These are edges that require you to have a certain rank of other edges to get a bonus in. Path edges. These are ones restricted to your society path. And, you know. Ironically, you can change your character's favorite approach with these attribute points. You can give yourself mega attributes, mega edges, various powers. You can up your quantum trait. You can increase a quantum power. You can give your powers tags, you know, like you start off with quantum blast. 
you add destructive to it. You add area to it. Those are tags. You can raise skills. You can buy skill tricks. You can buy you can buy new specialties and you can add a dock to your path. And the, one of the things is the various mega attributes do impact certain scales. Like some impact your leadership scale, some your mental scale. Some do both. Some increase your durability scale. All sorts of crazy things like that. Mega attributes are basically... I'm not just smart. I'm supernaturally smart. And I can do things with the, that you could never do with my thinking. Or, I'm not just tough. I'm supernaturally tough and I can take things that someone with my build normally couldn't take that's that's the rough elements of the mega attributes one other thing about the mega attributes is a number of them each dot you take adds to certain back uh, certain other edges like if you take mega presence that's upgrading your leadership scale and it's giving you points in fame. Powers are of course the bread and butter of the, of the genre. Powers are those things that, well they're your superpowers. Now some interesting things is that mega edges are kind of different from regular edges they're regular edges kind of just give you like bonuses in certain instances mega edges actually give you low end powers like an example is the two point mega edge compelling presence. You know, you're more than just charismatic or manipulative. You exert superhuman influence over others. You know, if you're within short range of the target and they can hear and understand you, you can spend a point of quantum and roll quantum plus presence mega presence mega presence supplies its leadership scale to this roll and your instructions will be followed now what i found really interesting is some of these you know mega speed is of course your classic Classic Speedster, Regeneration, Q-Tech, this is access to Quantum Tech, but there's a neat one, Movement Mode, and this allows you a additional way of then normal movement to move. Note, flight is not one of these. Flight is an actual power. But burrowing, clinging, gliding, skimming, slithering, swimming, and swinging. So, can you think of a friendly neighborhood superhero who has two of these powers? She has two movement modes, namely clinging and swinging. And this is the thing, when you combine that with a, you know, another power, another edge that lets you essentially 
detect danger, um, you can actually build one of generally the hardest to build superheroes in any superhero RPG. Your friendly neighborhood schoolboy and scientist. But other things to remember is as your quantum goes up, you kind of get a little bit more and more removed from humanity. I.e., when you have stronger and stronger power, you kind of get more detached from normal people. And this is represented by something called transcendence. And it basically is just that. The higher your rating in transcendence, the less you relate to people. And certain things, like adding to your quantum trait, adding to mega attributes, mega edges, and powers, you can take a point of transcendence and reduce the cost of that by 6 XP. You can also take what are called transformations, which are based on your level of transcendence, to reduce the cost of certain power, reduce the cost of taking certain powers. And transformations are basically as you're dealing, as you're channeling the raw quantum energy through your body, it kind of changes you. You know, it could do something like change your skin color, require you to feed on, feed on some specific substance, change your eye colors, make you have a glowing anime aura. Oh, sorry, anima aura. It can mess with your brain, you know, causing psychological works. It can change your voice, making your voice somehow different. And that's the low level stuff. At the higher level, you can have something like one of your powers becomes permanent in duration. One of your, one of your personal range powers becomes permanent. Your appearance can twist. Your epidermis can become hardened. You can get do uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde syndrome. That sort of thing. Now, of course, there's one really neat thing that they did for this edition. See, first edition you literally had to build every character straight from the ground up no idea what you're doing sometimes with this first off they gave a quick creation appendix which is just a you know rolling rolling your pads type thing. But then they did archetypes. And let's check since they have a nice list of them. There are ten archetypes. Elemental, fighter, genius, morph, mover, paragon, performer, sneak, summoner, and tank. And these are all sort of the iconic hero types. Elemental can be fire, ice. You know, it's elemental based powers. Uh, magnetism actually counts. Fighter is those, those superheroes who fight unarmed or you know, whose, whose power is they fight real good. And literally this one has no powers 
it is all mega attributes and mega edges. Genius are, well, the schmott guys. You know, people like Reed Richards, Tony Stark, Bruce Wayne. You know, it's anyone who's whose main power is they know stuff they know how to do stuff and that's a I said that's a quick it's a quick build setup again it's a a case of they don't they don't have powers again it's all pretty much it's pretty much mega attributes and boosted skills morphs are shape changers you know mystique morph hmm. um, metamorpho although not quite metamorpho I just realized DC doesn't have a lot of shape changers like this. Movers are your speedsters, Quicksilver and the Flash. But it can also be someone who just swims really well, or someone who burrows, or teleporters. It's any sort of movement based powers. Paragons are the little bit of everything. They're they're a little bit better than well baselines at just about everything. You know, you have physical paragons who are all their physical attributes are at five dots. Social attributes at four dots, mental attributes at three dots. The mental paragons, who it's mental at five and physical at three. And social, who it's social at five, physical at three. And then, you know, they have. And it's pretty much just the variations are shifting the dots around. I had one bonus attribute dot for two bonus skill dots, etc., etc. They don't really have powers. They just have they just have a lot of attributes. Performers are, of course those Novas whose abilities are relating to performance. Think Dazzler. Um, I mean, yeah, they have Mega Presence and some, well, showy powers like, uh, let's see, da -da -da. oh, yeah, most Mostly it's mega attributes again. Although it's three dots to, to any of a list of powers, including animal mastery, calming composure, dreadful presence, immediate connection, overwhelming denial, prodigy. Those are all mega edges. And yeah, and it's one of the variations is to trade mega attribute or mega edge dots in a quantum power, particularly something like environmental anima, healing, illusion, quantum attack, or shroud. Sneaks. Well, they are the stealthy people, and yeah, it's. 
It's like they're gonna have Mega Vision and Settle Presence, and then they get and then they get a set of Quantum Powers like Chameleon, Ghost, Chameleon more four, Ghost Phasing four, Shroud four, Broadband, dual, Broadband Dual and Variable, Shrinking. Uh, shrinking three and choose one more Mega Edge. Unseen. Cloak four. Broadband, Chemical, and Sonic. So yeah, that's... Summoner is, well... They summon things. They create quantum constructs in the forms of animals and such. And Tank... They're the person who takes a lot of damage. One of the variants that they give for the tank is taking Q-Tech 3 and for your Mega Edges and using that to give yourself a uh, Rank 6 suit with Toughness 2, Mega Might 1, Mega Stamina 1, and Flight 1. And then... You know, or you can be a giant. Replace Mega Might 3 with the Growth 3 Quantum Power. Or Invulnerable. Take Toughness 3 for Mega Edges. Takes experience worth of transformations for an additional pick from the Mega Edges list. Type things. But yeah, it's. You know, the, the base of it is Mega Might 3, Mega Stamina 3, and then choose 3 from Adaptation, Immunity, Mega Crush, Mega Lifting, Quantum Leap, Regeneration, Shockwave, Thunderclap, Toughness. And Toughness can be taken up to 3 times. Where their quick pick is. Quantum Leap, Thunderclap, and Toughness. But like I said, the one of the notable options is taking the taking Battle Suit Three for your mega, for your Mega Edges instead of the I'm sorry, taking Q Tech Three for your three Mega Edges and. Yeah, that is pretty much character creation. Now, I had to double check, but unlike other similar systems from Onyx Path slash White Wolf, the Story Path system doesn't do character advancement with a scaling XP cost. It's everything costs pretty much the same all the time. However, this is because of how gaming experience works. You don't get a lot of experience. I had to actually go and check the, uh, the Trinity Core just to make sure I had this right. You gain experience if you achieve a short-term aspiration on your character. If you achieve a long-term aspiration on your character, or those are the two solo group, solo XP awards. Noting and achieving a long-term aspiration is two versus the one XP for a short term. All players, no, these are group ones. All players achieve one short-term aspiration at this in the same session. Players spend the spend half the available momentum in a single scene, and the amount spent must be greater than one. The characters reach a story milestone, and those all grant one XP. And then 
the characters complete a group story, that's 3 XP. In other words, it's entirely possible for you to go sessions and not earn any XP. In fact, it's entirely possible that if no one achieves short-term aspirations, it can be a long time before someone earns any XP unless they complete a story milestone or do something big with completing the group story. And that is, that's advancement. So next week, I'm going to do a little bit different because I have both first and second edition books. And so what I'm going to do next week is I'm going to actually talk about the differences, the immediate noticeable differences between the two editions. Help put a little bit of context into just the changes and everything. So until then, I'd like you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming.